This is Dominic massaging his knee. Is it better, Dom? He was four years old, so he had his the knee in a cast. It itches it very much, right? So he used the lantern festival, one of the lanterns that can beat, and then I think because the tapping motion helps to relieve the itch for him. You like it that way? I think it's a good idea too. Hey, Grace. Hmm? Remember this? What's that? Oh, is that yeah. Dom's? Yeah. My goodness. Oh. Hey, Look at that, check all this, this stuff. Out. Hey, remember this book? Hey. This is his injuries book. It's so all his injuries all hey, down here. Number one down there. This was the heel prick. Yeah. I didn't strip over his own sandals, cut the upper cut lip. Cut it up, yeah. Yeah, I remember that one. It took a long oh, time. My. Every time he was in there was an injury, we would just write it down to help us remember what happened that occasion and what was the treatment for it. I guess we just needed to track his injuries because it was very frequent. As frequent as a week apart. And um, it also took a while to heal and we needed to know where certain parts of his body was more regularly injured than others. Yeah, so you can avoid some of those things if possible. So this is Dominic in March 2007. He was 11 months old then. There was an unwitnessed fall from the bed. So we found him on the floor and crying away. You can see he had a large cheek hematoma. And then in 2008, we had to bring him to the hospital because he bit his tongue on the right side while jumping at the childcare. So he had to have an infusion. Oh, eight as well, we had another one where he had a knock on uh, against the gate and it's huge, horrible hematoma on his head. In 2009, he had two fractures of unknown cause. And then in 2010, again, he had slipped on a wet floor and that resulted in his foot being in a cast. And in 2011, there were actually a number of bad instances where we actually had to bring him to the hospital. There's another photo of him in 2014. 2015 is a photo of him, I think, um, with a cut on his brow and he had to go to A&E to get it stitched up. It's just really a lot of injuries. More than 100 injuries he has had in just over seven years of his life here. Joel, did you grow taller? I did not. <laughs> Your voice has grown deeper. No. <laughs> One waffle and two scoops of sea salt caramel and almond. One waffle with two scoops of yeah. sea salt caramel. Huh? Yes. I don't want school holidays to end though. Yeah, I don't want to like wake up so early in the morning. Yeah, exactly. What secondary school are you going to? I'm going to St. Joseph Institution. I'm going Nanyang Girls High. Hmm, guess what? I'm going IGS. <laughs> are you nervous? Yeah, kind of. I'm really nervous. Do you think you all can make friends? I don't think I'll be making new friends. I'm kind of scared to make friends because I'm scared people judge me for my condition. No, people are very caring. And to me, I don't think that your condition will define you. People yeah. will like you for who you are. Aww. Why is this words by Gail? Oh, thank, oh, thank you. you. Wow. I've not seen you done it for a long time. I can't watch a break up because it's too scary. I'm checking my blood sugar level. I do this before every meal. So what I do is I prick myself and then I just put my finger on the tested area. Within five seconds, I can check my blood sugar reading. How I check like the amount of carbohydrates I'm going to be eating. I'm keying in waffles and ice cream. It says it's 57 grams of carbohydrates. With that information, I will use my insulin pump to do injection. Keying in my blood sugar level inside this meter, followed by the amount of carbohydrates I'm going to be eating, and then insulin will be going into my body through this tube. Now I can finally eat. 
The normal sugar readings is from 4 mmol to like 7. Whenever I eat, my blood sugar level will go up tremendously. So the purpose of taking insulin before every meal, the insulin will help to lower it down and make sure it's like the normal range from 4 to 7. Oh, so now it's dinner time and I need to check my blood sugar level and give myself insulin one more time. I have to check my blood glucose reading one more time before I go to bed to ensure that my blood sugar reading is not too low or too high. So I have to check my blood sugar reading minimally 5 to like 7 times a day. This is because I have type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is basically when your body does not produce insulin to be able to break down sugar. So when I go to a new school, I'll have to share my condition with the people around me so that they'll know what to do when my blood sugar reading is too low or when it's too high. I have a small concern because I'm afraid that they will think it is weird to have diabetes. Partner A along the white line, then partner B, you just stand about 5 metres apart and then you pass to your partner. Okay, let's see a demonstration, Saifu and Tremming, come forward. Then you can step on the ball to stop it first, then you pass. Okay, good. Some of my friends are quite violent with the ball lah, because they want to win. It will scare me a bit. Lah. So the teacher had a softer ball for me because sometimes the ball will hit me. They have to be careful. Lah. So they gave me a softer ball instead. Try to pass straight. Lah. For team 5 versus team 6, you all will play in this court over here and Jeremy will be the referee okay, for this game. Uh, I'm a referee. Because uh, I can't do contact sports no? and they are playing football, so a bit dangerous for me. No? Hey! Oh, go for your hands! Be more aggressive! No! How? How? You need to blow whistle also. Louder! Oi, oi, oi! Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> I really want to be in it so that I can like, be a part of it. Like. Whoa, nice one! Sometimes I feel a bit that like, why am I like, being a bad feel well, when I uh, was supposed to be playing with them. Like. Whoa. But my condition doesn't allow me to play contact sports like basketball or football. Whoa. If I get injuries, it may cause a lot of bleeding like, and may cause uh, death like, even. End game, end game. I was diagnosed with hemophilia B, blood disorder. When a normal person just fall down and have a, have a cut, the blood will, will eventually clot after a while, but for hemophilia, my blood will take a longer time to clot, or sometimes it will not even clot itself. Now. Most serious episode. I think it was the recent knee swelling episode where I could not walk and I had to rely on a wheelchair for uh, two or three days straight. Now. My favorite lessons are Chinese lessons. My hobby is public speaking, so this this type of lessons actually interests me a lot. Three words together. Ah, can. 
也不错嘞。Jun Ming is very competent in his verbal communication skills. So whenever we hold classroom discussions, he shares his idea very readily, very articulate. He actually injects a lot of liveliness into classroom discussions. Jumin was diagnosed with the global dementia delay at about two and a half years. Global dementia delay means uh, his overall development is behind normal people. <coughs> By three or four years old, he still cannot pronounce very clearly. He's just blabbering, still don't know what he's saying. When the doctors told us your son have GDD, we were like, oh, homophilia is bad enough and now we have something else more. <laughs> because I'm the caregiver. So I spent most time with him. I've trained him with the flashcards when he was about two years old. Where are my shirts? How old are you? This box is square. I am. At the beginning, he would just stare. Bye boy. Ride the bicycle. Ride the bicycle. Now, Pian. Yeah, Now, Pian. When he reached about five or six years old, his speech is much clearer. Yao Xi Chao. I'm really happy and proud of him. He he's actually able to do all this. He's able to speak fluently now, but back then when he was young, it was a very difficult task to train him to speak. All our work, you know, all the help from the teachers got only one objective to help him to be as normal as possible. One of the few places I can go to on my own is my school. Mm -hmm. I enjoy the bus ride right? because this bus ride right is actually one of the few things that I get to do on my own. So I stay in Bedok and the furthest I can go is to Tampanese. There was once I tried to ask my mom that she go to Woodlands and my mom gave a big no because she, she was Concern about my safety. Lah. I'm thinking of asking her again. This time I will actually choose a nearby place. Maybe you will have a higher chance, you know, that she will say yes. Uh, I'm actually a bit nervous because uh, I'm not sure whether, you know, whether she's in a good mood, you know. This is what happens when Dominic cannot walk to the bathroom. He needs to have his teeth brushed outside here. The bathroom is brought to Dominic. Mm -hmm. Yes, to make sure that his tea would not drop. Right now? Hey, this one, remember? Yeah. I remember him bringing it to school or something. Think to explain to, to his friends. Yeah, to explain to his friends. Oh, this was the major one. He had the blisters on, oh, his, yeah, yeah. on his arm, right? Dominic has Hemophilia A. Hemophilia A is a blood clotting disorder. If you get a cut or a bleed, it will take a longer time to stop bleeding. Hey, where's that from? Yeah, look at what we found. Look at what Remember what this we one? Found. Yes. This is your book of injuries. Oh my. Terrible are you. March, May, May again, June. <laughs> Dominic, why are you always injured, man? So today I'm going for my practical lesson and it is the only practical lesson in my year one polytechnic where I get to use large machineries and make different objects. I take the train to Poly every day and I've been taking public transport on my own from about the age of 11. My parents have always wanted me to be independent because it allows me to not be different from my peers. I mean, the only thing they ask is that I don't come home injured. I normally stand when on public transport. However, if I were to have injured a joint, I would sometimes sit in the reserve seat. However, some commuters may not understand why someone that is young as me may require to sit down at the reserve seat. My condition is invisible and they may not understand what I'm going through.
When you want to do drilling, what do you do? The first thing you do, you find the... The what? Datum. Yes, very good. Datum point. So, I am in Singapore Polytechnic currently, year one, studying Diploma in Mechatronics and Robotics, where they train us to become robotics engineers. All right, take your piece here, then go to your machine and mount in the drill chuck. Why robotics? Since young, there were a lot of times if I am in the hospital bed, I have toys around me. Let's say you're building with Lego. Um, you can sit at one spot and you can build. You don't need to move around and you can build whatever you want. I think that is one thing that helped form my passion in robotics. After you drill right, it should align with the, the, the counter bar hole which you drilled earlier. For our introduction to engineering project, we are creating a handphone stand as you can see. This is the first project that I've done for this module. I will be putting all of this together in about two weeks' time. And I get to keep the phone stand as like a memory. This is one of the more dangerous ones because this spins at about 1,100 to 1,200 RPM. And it's a cutter, so if you are to touch it, it can cause a lot of issues because you'll cut yourself and that's quite dangerous because for me, if you bleed, bleeds don't stop easily. When normal people get cut, their bodies are able to clock quite quickly. But if I were to get cut, I don't clot, which means that more blood is lost, it stays open for longer, which adds issues. You said already the... Yeah, 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 I said already. This is the first time I face this kind of a student. I'm concerned that in the workshop, is quite accident hazard. So initially, he was allocated a machine quite far from me. So after hearing his condition, I put his machine just beside my machine. Okay, can, can, can. I try to try and get Yeah, so uh, while doing that, uh, metal strip flew out. So I think that's one reason why you wear eye protection, because that can cut, especially your eyes. Uh, it can also cut other portions, so thankfully it went to the floor and didn't hit me. Why aren't you wearing extra protective gear? You try to live as much of a normal life. I mean, if I had, if I wanted to, I could wear knee protection, every uh, protect everywhere. If I fall, at least it's covering me, right? But then you don't get to live a normal life. Okay, guys, come with me to the front. Okay, all right. So remember, next week is our uh, test. Yes, next week test. But after that, we have another week for us to finish up whatever, not finish, and do assembly. I think completing this project is quite important to me because that is a significant portion of my grade. And so hopefully everything goes well and I'm not limited by my condition. Today I'll be moving into U-Town residence and uh, yeah, unpacking all my stuff. I'm hoping the unpacking process will go well. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, that dustbin is mine too. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna go collect my key card and find out where my room is. Hello. Hi. 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 You have completed the check-in declaration? Yep. Okay. Wow, okay. She's not bad, lah, huh? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Okay, I want to see the room. Oh, wow. I am going to clean this room up and then unpack everything. Oh. I'm quite particular about cleanliness, so I really want to make sure I get every bit of this room cleaned. Oh, it smells like a hospital. <sighs> Very dizzy. So, things like this happen. I have to hold onto things. I have to lean against things. Which is a bit frustrating because my clothes are dirty and I have to re-clean this all over again. Yes! But, um... It's 
I'd rather do this than pass out because I might hit something, you know, all these sharp corners. I take significantly longer to tidy up because I have to take a lot of breaks and there's always the risk of passing out, so I have to be prepared. Cleaning usually involves a lot of bending down and standing up, so that's not really good for my heart. I'm a bit nauseous because when my heart rate goes up very high, it kind of like triggers nausea. I'll probably take a break after this and then continue cleaning. I have postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, also known as POTS. With POTS, when I get up from a lying or sitting position to a standing position, I'll feel very dizzy. I can feel my heart rate going up, so I can feel my heart pumping faster and faster. And sometimes it will start hurting because of how fast it is pumping. Okay, so this is what I usually do at home. Lah, huh? So if I'm giddy, right, and my heart rate is very high, what I do is I just lie down on the floor, prop my legs up on the chairs. Uh, usually I have to lie down like this for about 10 minutes, but like up to half an hour. So I haven't finished cleaning my room yet. I'll be going home today and then coming back to clean on another day. Hi, Vanisha. Have you prepared everything already? Uh, yeah. Okay, everything is in place, that's good. Um, mm. I think we can start. This is my first year at NUS Nursing. I have always had an interest in the human body and it has always fascinated me how a tiny little pill or a tiny little vial of medication can cure a person and it can be the difference between life and death for a person. And that's why I decided to join profession in healthcare. How will you locate your landmark? Two fingers facing from the navel. Okay, good. I know how it feels like to be lying in a hospital bed and not knowing what's wrong with you. Being angry, frustrated, sad, confused and very worried. I know how it feels like and I want to be there for the patients as much as I can. If I cannot cure my condition, I can at least help others feel better about themselves. Because that is what I would have wanted for myself. For lunch, I'm having this chicken curry rice at, from the Japanese food store. Yeah, it, it tastes quite nice. I tried it before. I have not told my friends about my condition yet, so this is the first time they're gonna see it. 